Hi, I'm Lynn Elkins of IBM's Washington System Center. This is starting a series of short presentations on the IBM MQ4 ZOS System Management Facility or SMF data. This first one is called, What is MQSMF? IBM is asking us to create short 7 to 10 minute sessions on various topics. I'm trying to break down a complex technical topic into this snack size format. I would appreciate feedback on both the format and content. This is just the overview for this session. A bit of background. What I would like to do is go back to the beginning and try to give you how I wish I had been taught about the MQSMF data. I don't come from the development lab. I do not have the advantage of seeing the code where the data is gathered, written to SMF files or log streams, or interpreted. I came from an application integration and CICS administration background, so MQSMF was not my native tongue. Also, because the documentation was traditionally not a priority, there are many things about the SMF data that I found confusing, frustrating, and really quite annoying over the years. Experimenting with this data, though, asking many questions, and looking at a lot of data generated from customer environments, some years as many as 30 different customers, I've discovered patterns of use and abuse that help me locate queue manager and application inefficiencies, and better yet, to head them off. It has also enabled me to discover more about the internals of the queue manager and the channel initiator. For those of you not familiar with ZOS, SMF is the ZOS System Management Facility reporting tool. Nearly all ZOS subsystems report some data via SMF or RMF, the Resource Monitoring Facility. Subsystems have to register record types that they use with IBM. Some, like MQ, have been granted multiple record types. Each record type may have more than one subtype, and those don't have to be registered. Anyone who's ever dealt with a committee will appreciate the advantage to that. Each subsystem's data is unique, and there are also times when the MQSMF data should be used in conjunction with the resource monitoring facility data for a more complete picture of resource use. For example, each MQQ manager produces statistics about the use of coupling facility structures, and the RMF data contains information about each LPAR in the SysPlex that accesses those structures. By using the MQSMF data from the Q managers in a Q sharing group and the RMF data together, a more complete picture can be derived about resource utilization. I've included a link for more information on SMF as a whole. I've quoted here from the MQ Knowledge Center. What's really important for everyone to know is that MQ statistics records are the at the queue manager and channel initiator address space levels. They're giving a high level view into resource use and the operations of the two address spaces. This includes overall counts of requests, use of storage, internal tasks, etc. The MQ task accounting records are details about applications use of MQ and the resources like the requests against specific queues that are used by these tasks. The MQ channel accounting records are the details of how a channel from sender to receiver to server connections are used. So why do we have to look at the MQ SMF data? Well the first reason is that MQ doesn't report into tools like the ZOS Health Checker which are designed to help keep an eye on the various subsystems. So an MQ administrator might have to figure out if a queue manager has messages flowing if, if it is healthy during a normal operational period. And that same administrator may have to help predict how healthy the queue manager will remain if the workload increases. For the current status, I'd first look to the system monitoring tool of choice in the environment or the JES log for the queue manager and channel initiator. This is where you're going to get results of display commands about resource status. These tools will expose the current state of the queue manager and its objects, 
but these tools may not tell you about trends and utilization growth. The MQSMF data is used to evaluate what the resource utilization is underneath the overall day-to-day -day use and whether growth can start impacting smooth operations. Another use of MQSMF data is often what I've had one customer refer to as mean time to innocence studies, proving that MQ, especially MQ on ZOS, is not the problem. As more applications are constructed out of component parts that can run anywhere, including in cloud-hosted environment, responsiveness problems can be more difficult to track down. Often the one clue that it is immediately evident is the message depth on a queue, and that makes MQ appear to be the bottleneck. Some administrators have reported that they are spending more of their time proving that MQ is not where work is slowing down. So let's introduce the MQ SMF data itself. The first type of data is the statistics data, the type 115 records. The second is the accounting data, also known as the type 116 records. Information gathering and generation of these records is controlled by the type, stat or accounting, and the class. The class is used to control the components that are going to be included and the level of detail that may be generated. The MQ statistics classes are three. One and two are the general queue manager statistics, including information about resources like buffer pools for messages, the coupling facility, the log manager, and many others. Class four is the channel initiator statistics, which include information about the high watermark of channel utilization, adapter and dispatcher task use, storage consumption, etc. The MQ accounting classes start with class 1, which is also known as the QMAC data. Those records were originally designed for chargebacks. The class 3 data, which is the next class, is associated with the tasks, and it includes the Q records and requests and resources that are task le level, like commit requests and latching activity. Finally, the class 4 accounting data is channel accounting records that include specific information about individual channel utilization. These are my general recommendations for collecting the MQSMF data. The first one is to set the QManager stat time attribute. It controls when the collected SMF data is written to the SMF data sets or log streams. The value can be set either on the zparms or via a set system command. It should be set to zero to coordinate the MQ production of SMF data with other subsystems like CICS, or it can be set to a number of minutes. 30 minutes is the default, but that should be set lower when you are looking into a performance problem. It can be set as low as one per minute, uh, for particularly challenging problems. You should always collect the MQ statistics data. The records are lightweight, there's just a few of them produced per SMF interval, um, and this should be set on the zparms for every queue manager. All statistics classes should be gathered, including the class 4 for channel initiator statistics. You can use the asterisk on the SysP macro to make sure that that happens. The statistics should be reviewed regularly in a very stable environment with a predictable workload. Once or twice a month is usually enough. In a less predictable environment, this data should be reviewed weekly or daily, depending on the volatility of the environment. The accounting data is heavier. I recommend that it be gathered and reviewed occasionally, even for stable environments. This is for two reasons. First of all, it gives you an early opportunity to see changes in application use of MQ. But more than that, it allows you to be familiar with this data should a problem arise. No one wants to be learning a complex format when you're in the midst of a critical problem. Accounting class 1 and 3 data are, records are written at task end. 
if a task is long running, then intermediate task records are written for the active tasks at the stat time intervals as well. Channel accounting records are currently written at stat time intervals no matter how many times the channel has been stopped and restarted during an interval. So we've made a beginning. Thank you very much for your time and attention. If you download the presentation, there are some informational slides that may be helpful as well. This is Lynn Elkins of the IBM Washington System Center, and if you like this, please let me know, and there will be more coming.